Welcome everyone to Depression to Expression. My name is Scott and today we're talking about self-acceptance. How can we be more content with mistakes that we made in the past? How can we not let them affect our present? How can we have a flourishing and fulfilling future while not being our own worst critic? Well, today I'm sharing five steps, five waves, five waves, five ways, five different perspectives you can take and uh, things you can integrate into your daily life that may help you with this, uh, this notion of self-acceptance. So these five steps are about, you know, getting to a state of self-acceptance and showing ourselves some compassion. As I said, we're always our own worst critic and, and we put ourselves down all the time. When, when we do something wrong, when we, when we mess up something, when we make a mistake, when we embarrass ourselves, when we're, we're not in a place where we think we should be in life, we blame ourselves. And, you know, there's nothing beneficial about that. So the first step to self-acceptance is to think of something that you did in the past. Revisit your past a little bit, and I know it may be painful. And tell yourself that you did the best you could at the time. You did the best you could at that time. Now, the reason I say best is this can mean two things. Maybe you did at that time give 100% effort and something still just didn't work out. The mistake was still made. You were still hard on yourself even though you did the best. Well, what if you reframe it as you did what you thought was right at the time? I think of the mistakes I've made in the past, if you go back to, you know, when you were a teenager and growing up and our minds are a little smaller and the world is a little more compact and we're not as smart and open-minded as we are now. And it's easy to think that, that in that moment that you, you thought you were doing the right thing. You're, you thought you knew it all. It, it's easy to have a large ego at that age. You thought you knew it all. You thought you were doing the right thing and you thought you were doing the best thing. Well, have that perspective now. How many years ago, 10 years ago, five years ago, at that moment in time, you did the best you could. You thought what you were doing was the right thing. Sure, you know it was wrong now, but not at that moment. And you can't change that. So that's accepting the mistakes that we make in the past as noticing that I was somebody else back then. I don't have control over that person. I'm not that person anymore. But he or she did the best they could at the time. They thought what they were doing was right and it's now done and it's time to move on. So that's step number one towards self-acceptance is looking at the past and realizing that it's over and you thought you did the right thing and the best you could at that time. Number two, the second step towards self-acceptance is to know that perfection isn't the goal. Your goal in life is not to be perfect. The goal in life is not to avoid all mistakes. The point of life is not to avoid failure. You know, we, we all have different meanings uh, that we put towards different things and we all have a different definition of what our lives should entail and what our lives mean. But in my experience, it's the imperfection. That's the beautiful stuff. That's the gold. The failures are, are, what, are, are what, you know, sprout new growth. The failures and the mistakes are what make us better human beings. The failure is the soil in which, in which we grow. So if you're, if you're trying to be perfect all of the time and you make one mistake, well, how can you be accepting of yourself and your situation when every time you veer off the path just a little bit, you're that much harder on yourself? Acknowledge that perfection isn't the goal. Acknowledge that life is imperfect in itself. Know that there's going to be mistakes and there's going to be plenty of hard times ahead. There's going to be failures. No matter how much you prepare, there's going to be mistakes made. And know that that's okay. Know that that's all in the plan. Know that that's how life is supposed to be. Because if you have the expectation that you're going to make no mistakes, well, 
you're setting yourself up to be disappointed. You're setting yourself up to not accepting what life actually has to offer. And that's a lot of shit. Life has a lot of curveballs to throw at you. So step number two is know that life isn't supposed to be perfect and that perfection is not the goal. Number three, we can think of self-acceptance as self-satisfaction. Are you satisfied with yourself? Do you like where you are in life? Are you happy with who you are, right? And if we're not satisfied with something, or if we are dissatisfied, well, we can look at what things we can do to change that, to be more satisfied with our life situation and who we are. So I challenge you with number three, think about things that you can change right away that can make you feel more accepting and more satisfied with yourself, right? How can you feel more accepting towards yourself? When you can look in the mirror and say, I, I love who I see right now. Is it something as simple as, as changing what you're wearing? Is it as simple as shaving and looking a little more clean cut, right? Is it something to do with, well, you know what? I haven't called my family in a really long time and I feel a little guilty about that because I'd like to be the son or daughter that contributes to the family and has open lines of communication, right? Where are your values there? So are there things that you're dissatisfied with? And if there are, what actions can you take to solve that? Because when we have unsolved problems in our lives, which there always will be, there's, there's of course gonna be dissatisfaction, but the very first step is to have an action plan. Note that there are problems but more importantly, note that there are things we can do about them, that we have the power, right? We have the power to solve them. So part of that self-acceptance is to know that I have the power to solve all of these problems and everything I'm dissatisfied with in my life. And I know that once I fix these and when I'm on the path to fix these, I'm, a more, I'm gonna be more of an accepting person of myself. So if there are quick things you can fix, do it. You know, shaving and all of that was just a quick example, but if there are quick things, do them right now. For long term, write them down and have a plan of action. Number four, okay, I know that it's really, really easy to look at the negative all the time. Of course, it's way easier. We can train our brains so much, but you flip on the TV and I guarantee it's all negative news. That's what sells. That's the story we've been told that life is such a tragedy and, and it's such a negative place and we just see what's happening around the world and we're kind of skewed towards this negativity. And that's what happens in our minds a lot of the time. When we think of our past, the things that really stick, the things that we constantly think of, well, those are the mistakes. Those are the times we messed up. We think of the times where we had no control and we were taken advantage of. We think of the hard times and the suffering in our past. But believe it or not, you have a lot of good in your past that you can reflect on. A lot of times where you faced a problem head on. A lot of times where, where you thought you couldn't do something and you did it. When you faced a fear head on. When you were really proud of yourself. When you were truly happy when you made a difference in the world and in your community. There are tons of these examples. And step four is to be more self-accepting is to realize that you have made it really far and you have done things in your life that make you worthy of love and worthy of others accepting you and worthy of you accepting you. It's about self-love. Reflect on your past. Know that you did a great job. Think of specific scenarios when you did a great job at work, when your mom and dad told you that they were proud of you, right? When you had a family gathering, when you had a laugh with your friends. Think of the good times. That's self-acceptance to know that I did a great job. I'm continuing to do a great job. I know deep within my being that I am worthy to be here, that I'm worthy to be loved by me. So reflect on your past and, and write these down. Daydream a little. There's nothing wrong with daydreaming. Daydream. Think of those good times. Number five, last and definitely not least, we have 
uniqueness. Th this channel's all about self-expression. How do we express ourselves in ways that make us feel unique, make us feel like a real individual? How do we express ourselves that makes us love ourselves? How do we express ourselves so that we're aligning our lives with what we believe in and what we value? That's what depression to expression is all about. I believe with all of my heart that this channel offers something unique, that I offer something unique to the world by sharing stories of depression, anxiety, offering strategies, crying on camera, being a little bit vulnerable online. I think, I think I'm doing a great thing. I think I'm unique in that. I, I like what I'm offering. So what I'm offering to you and what I'm asking you to do is think of what makes you unique. What makes you unique? What's something you can do? What's something you think about? What's something that nobody else has but you? What's some strange talent you have? What do you really like about yourself? This can be so simple. It doesn't have to be a big thing. We don't have to play the comparison game. Well, I play the guitar, but my friend is a better guitarist, so that's not really unique about me. No, you play the guitar differently than your friend does. We don't have to compare and get on the same level as everyone else. That's not what self-acceptance and self-love is all about. It's knowing that you specifically have something to offer. You like nobody else. So what's something that's unique about you? Write them down. What's something that you really like about yourself? This can be anything. Do you like the way your hair looks in the morning? Do you like the way that you swing a tennis racket? <laughs> Do you like your own smile? Do you like your own, like, really, I, I'm not sure what it is. Do you, do you like the way you, ch I, I'm running out of ideas. I don't even know. I gave my, I gave my ideas and now it's up for you. I was about to say, do you like the way you, sh you manually shift a car if you drive standard? That's a terrible example. But what's unique about you? I know you can have fun with it and I know there are things that you can list. You can list a hundred things, man. I know you can. It's hard. It's a hard process. Because as I said, we're our own worst critics. No matter how many people love us, if someone says great job to you, if someone says I love you, if someone says you're compassionate, you're empathetic, you know, you're an incredible human being, that doesn't mean anything to us if we don't believe it ourselves. If we don't have that self-compassion and self-love, if we don't like where we are in life or we, we can't congratulate ourselves and give ourselves a pat on the back, what other people tell us doesn't mean anything. It starts with you. It starts with self-love. It starts with accepting our past failures. It starts with knowing that life isn't perfect. It starts with knowing that life is extremely difficult and no one has an easy time. That's something we're not unique with. Everyone goes through hard times. Everyone struggles with this exact thing, this exact idea of self-love. We all struggle with from time to time. That's why we have to work at it. That's why mental health and training our minds and being, being present and, and working on self-improvement and self-growth is a lifetime skill. It's a lifetime practice. You don't go to the gym once, do 20 curls and say, I'm fit, I'm done. That's it. Your muscles are huge. That's it. No, that's not it. You go to the gym three times a week for the rest of your life to maintain health, maintain the muscle and physique that you want. Same with the mind. You can't meditate once and think that you're going to be happy for the rest of your life and super zen. You can't do these self-acceptance practices once and think you're okay. We need to constantly think of these things, not too much, but just enough so, so we know that our, we're developing and that we're not stuck in the past and that we're not constantly comparing ourselves to others and that we're content and satisfied with our life. That's what this is all about. That's what this channel Depression to Expression is about. And 
The testimonials and, and the comments on this channel just continue to blow my mind at, um, at the level of intelligence and, and the self-awareness people have within, you know, the self and, and how they know where they're steering off the path and, and they know that, that life isn't easy, but they're accepting towards that. So I challenge you to try these five things towards self-acceptance, five steps, and please let me know what you think in the comments. Please, spreading some love in the comments, just say hi to everybody. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. There are plenty of videos uh, about mental health on this channel. So lastly, I'd just like to say to everyone, stay strong, keep being you, and don't forget to express yourself. This has been Scott from Depression to Express, huh, huh. Depression to Expression, take care.